Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Hark the seagulls! I'm feeling like three sheets to the wind. Can you hear the seagulls? Oh, they're so beautiful. The waves. I'm feeling the crashing of the waves. It's totally not a green screen. <laughs> Shiver me timbers, we're gonna be talking about... Not pirates, but sharks. Bad movies that had to do with sharks. Because, wow, there's a lot of them. There's a whole lot of them. I have a huge list. Here are some of them. Ice Sharks. Planet of the Sharks. Empire of the Sharks. Toxic Shark. House Shark. Sharknado. Ouija Shark. Shark Exorcist. Sharkenstein. Raiders of the Lost Shark. Sharktopus versus Werewolf. Two-Headed Shark Attack. And that's just a small portion there of uh, all of the abysmal shark movies. <laughs> For whatever reason, the movie industry wants to abuse sharks to no end. I don't understand it. I mean, you guys thought nuns and phones had it bad, but... Damn, them sea creatures. They need to be left alone for a while. Today, my young deckhand, we're going to be looking at two of these movies. The first one being Ouija Shark. And it's pretty much exactly what you would imagine. It's about a ghost shark that's summoned from a Ouija board. I don't know why someone made this, but they did, so let's check it out, I guess. So the movie starts with this girl that goes to the beach and finds a piece of driftwood that has like some Ouija stuff on it. And she's like, oh, that's weird. And instead of leaving it there like any you know, logical person would. She takes it home because she's like obsessed with the occult or something. So she's really interested in this random piece of wood with letters on it. I'm guessing no mic was used for this movie aside from the camera mics because it's hard to make out what anyone's saying. Like, just listen to this. Hi. I'm Jen. This is Donna and Tiffany. Hi. You can call me Tiff. Hey. Kim, thanks for inviting me. Oh, my pleasure. I mean, I've got all my stuff here already. If you guys want to go get everything set up, I can make you some drinks. Yay! The only times in this movie when you can actually hear the dialogue is when someone's like right next to a camera. I mean, it makes sense in that instance, but... My parents told them I'd watch the place. I told them only if I could bring my friends. This feels like a movie someone made on their cell phone. There's this really painful scene of this girl helping this guy wash his car. And you know they're trying to be like sexual and it just isn't working at all. I mean, she looks young, like maybe too young for this scene, and it makes me very uncomfortable. Like there's really terrible music playing in the background the entire time. So a bunch of girls use the Ouija board and it just keeps responding hungry, you know, because there's a shark in the Ouija board, you see. <laughs> a ghost shark, it makes sense. Why? Hungry? <laughs> Looks like this board has a one-track mind. <laughs> There's a really weird edit when the ghost shark pops up. It's very creative. Um, you can tell that the person editing this movie was very invested. So the protagonist girl calls her dad in the middle of the night because she's scared about this weird Ouija board that keeps saying hungry. The strangest things keep this girl up at night. I'm not sure why. Her dad might be the worst actor in existence. Just watch this scene play out. Daddy, it's me. Did I wake you? No, sweetheart. I'm working late tonight. Is something wrong? He comes across so unnatural. <laughs> Dreams can be a doorway to the unconscious mind. Then there's a really painful scene of a guy and a girl on a date. Like, these people clearly aren't actors. They must just be friends of a family that was making this movie or something. I'd like to catch some rays. Oh yeah, uh, you should totally do that. The guy eats crackers nervously because he's with a girl and he doesn't know how to respond to a girl. And then they see the ghost shark, the phantom fish. They see it in all its glory <laughs> and it eats these two people with its ghost shark teeth. <laughs> As it swims through the air. Very frightening to say the least. So this girl is smoking weed by the pool and then the ghost shark just Pops out of nowhere. It's just floating there. Like, hey, I'm the ghost shark. 
<laughs> it's so clearly a plastic toy that they just put some effect on. Like they just held it out in front of a green screen or something and then made it into a ghost. Just like this, watch, I'm a ghost now, see? I'm a ghost sailor. Ahoy there, matey. Watch out for the seagulls, I'm coming to get ya. In the next scene, a bunch of girls are just chilling outside, talking about breakfast. And one of the girls goes, so no brekkie? No brekkie. So no brekkie? Well, there's coffee and milk and what we ate last night. No brekkie. If someone actually spent the time to write this in the script, then bravo. You almost had me, movie. You almost had me, but... Ha! Take that. Now I have my cringe goggles on and there's nothing you can do. So the main girl's dad is doing some research on uh, shark ghosts because he clearly has nothing better to do. He uses these tarot cards and he comes to the conclusion that, oh my God, my daughter's gonna be eaten by a shark ghost. You know, because logic, that makes sense. Any uh, rational person would come to this conclusion. Reason to worry right here. You better get your daughter and store her away somewhere where the, where the where the ghost shark can't get her. So the brekkie girl goes to buy some brekkie and on her way to get some brekkie, she, she runs into the Ouija plank and she's like, oh, what's this doing here? I wonder what this Ouija plank's doing there. That was your one and only offense and it was a bad one, getting some brekkie. The shark ghost wants the brekkie, right? So the shark ghost eats its brekkie. <laughs> So then one of the girl's moms asks a cop to look for her daughter because she's missing. So the cop calls his cop friend and he's like, hey, help me look for this girl, go to this place. And he's like, no, I don't want to because I'm getting drunk in the middle of the day even though I'm in a pitch black bar. It must just have no windows. I'm in a windowless bar in the middle of the day. And then that cop's like, fine, I'll do it. I'll go check on her. So he goes into a stairwell. He starts pissing all over the place. This is a good analogy for cops nowadays in the United States. Yeah, let's not get political right now. We're talking about shark movies. <laughs> so the ghost shark comes out of the wall and eats this cop who's taking a piss on the wall because the ghost shark doesn't like when people piss where they're not supposed to, you see. So why did the shark attack this random police officer? Well, just don't ask questions, okay? And it all makes sense. <laughs> and the sound effect that they use when the shark eats someone is so funny. No! No! It kind of reminds me of in the video game Banjo-Kazooie, when you transform into the alligator and you chomp something. It's pretty much the exact same noise. So the protagonist is with her friend and they're walking along the trail and they see the ghost shark hover above them. Oh no, it's a very creative edit. <laughs> the shark chomps on another girl. Oh no. <laughs> so the protagonist goes to her car and suits up, ready for battle. You know those scenes when Batman suits up? You know, he like puts on all of his gadgets? Same thing in this movie, except it's 10 times better because all this girl needs to defeat a ghost shark is a leather jacket, some spiked boots, and a shotgun. <laughs> Shouldn't it be a harpoon gun, you know, cause it's a shark? I guess this girl just doesn't know how to kill fish. So then this random phantom dude just pops out of nowhere and he's like, hey, I know everything about the ghost shark. And he starts explaining it to her. Oh, okay, cool. He's basically just explaining it to the audience because there's no reason for him to do this, but whatever. She looks away and he vanishes. So the protagonist girl shoots the shark with her shotgun and uh, surprise, surprise, it does diddly squat. Her dad tries to interfere and save his daughter by going to a psychic and she has a little crystal ball thing and her dad's like, oh, I know how to fix this problem. So he picks up the crystal ball and he's like, over here, over here, fresh meat, you phantom fish. Come and eat me. Hey. Over here! So the shark comes out of nowhere and chomps on him too, so... Yeah, it's just going around, killing everybody. Come on, you son of a... <laughs> and then there's an amazing scene <laughs> of the dad fighting the ghost shark in heaven. You know, because they're both spirits. They're both in the spirit realm. So now he's on a level playing field with the shark and they start battling. <laughs> It's epic. He goes, oh no, I'm dead. Oh no. You can't hurt me anymore. 
He then realizes that the shark can't hurt him anymore, so they start fighting. But the shark proves him wrong by shooting him with a fire spell. Ouch! It burns! The dad's like, oh my god, I need to come up with something to, to defeat the shark. So then he uses a technique that he got straight from Doctor Strange and deflects the fire spell back at the shark. An incredible battle ensues, and then they both just explode. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened here. They just kind of combust. <laughs> just don't ask questions, okay? So then the protagonist girl just shoots the Ouija board and then it kills the shark, so... Um, that was easy. This is for my dad, you aquatic douchebag. Why didn't she do that to begin with? Who knows? I guess it just didn't cross her mind. Whatever. So remember that random phantom dude that popped out of nowhere? Well, he returns at the end of the movie to, uh, no joke, call Donald Trump and tell him that everything is going according to plan because the, the ghost shark was Donald Trump's idea. I think that checks out. <laughs> I love how they just like rub Cheeto dust all over a regular dude's chin to make it look like Donald Trump. <laughs> it's amazing. Excellent. Repair phase two of Operation Ouija Shark. It's gonna be huge. <laughs> All right, guys. Movie number two. House Shark. You know, a house shark is not the only thing you have to worry about. There's also sharks on the internet. And how do you protect yourself from internet sharks? NordVPN. Huh? <laughs> Today's sponsor, NordVPN. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video, Nord. Don't let those bad guys on the internet get into your treasure chest, people. Keep yourself safe with NordVPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. You can search the web anonymously. Your location stays private and your data is encrypted. Now that is great. And say you're having trouble watching a video that isn't available in your country. Well, NordVPN's got you sorted. With just one click of your mouse, you can virtually teleport to any country you want. NordVPN is the best because they're super fast with a bunch of servers all over the globe. And if you use your phone most of the time, well, good news because they have Apple and Android apps for mobile browsing, and they're free with your account. So if you're ready to take your privacy more seriously and keep those internet sharks at bay, then wait no longer. Go to nordvpn.com Elvis, or use coupon code Elvis to get 70% off a three-year plan plus one month free. So get NordVPN right now. Click the link at the top of the description, and it'll bring you right there. This one is epic. Hell yeah. This movie is at least kind of competently shot, so that was a nice change of pace for me. <laughs> the acting was very hit or miss for me in this one, which is a lot better than the garbage fire that was the last movie, so <laughs> thank God. The movie starts with a 25-year-old dad talking to his 16-year-old son. I'm not sure how that works, but just don't pay attention to that. <laughs> the dad's name is Frank, and he goes on a date with this very interesting looking woman. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Frank. She's quite the smoker. Oh God. And that thing that you did with her tongue is a little bit strange. So Frank leaves his son at home with the babysitter, Betsy. Betsy goes and takes a piss completely naked. I don't know, this is very weird. And she has period farts. Damn period gas. I didn't know that was a thing until this movie. The more you know. <laughs> Thanks, house shark. I appreciate it. So then the shark comes up from the toilet and eats her ass. Quite literally, it just devours her. So the dad comes home with pubes all over his face. <laughs> He goes into the bathroom to see Betsy all bloody, sitting on the toilet. Sitting on the toilet! He tries to save her, but to his dismay, she just explodes. So, that's too bad for Betsy. And then, a shark fin appears from within the toilet. <laughs> it's very scary. In the next scene, Frank and Theo are eating baked beans! Yes, both of them are eating beans. Frank asks Theo, why aren't you eating your beans, Theo? 
Eat your beans, Theo. You didn't eat your beans. Unacceptable! Relax. Take a chill pill. So then the dad makes a very relatable comment. Why don't you watch your pubuscus and Toby pie that you like so much? Get it? Because they're YouTubers and he makes up the names. Uh, very funny. Very clever. Thanks. I hate it. So then Frank starts describing the shark fin to his ex-wife. It's got a penis. Tits, too, like some sort of she-male. I'm not sure where he's getting this information from. Maybe he saw something that I didn't. Frank does a lot of research in the library and finds that there's a new species of shark called the house shark. <laughs> in the next scene, this realtor is showing a couple the house with the house shark in it. So Frank pulls the realtor aside and then the, the couple gets attacked by the house shark. Wait, did you hear something, John? It's clear as day that they got attacked by the house shark because this random woman comes out of nowhere and screams, house shark, house shark. You know, that, that's how you know it's a house shark is if some random person says it is. So Frank and the realtor look on in horror. Oh my goodness, the house shark, it's back. Or it actually never left because they never did anything about it. So, hmm, Frank has had enough of this house shark and you can tell because he's standing outside in the rain, staring at the house. And then he screams, bring me Zachary Taylor. If you weren't aware, Zachary Taylor is a house shark expert. Now you know. So then there's a scene of the realtor talking to his boss and uh, his boss has a taxidermied body in his office, like a human body. Yeah, it's very strange. Just thought I'd mention that. So the realtor's boss is really mad that they can't sell the house. So he hires the only person that's qualified to get this house sold, Darth Squanto. It's a Native American uh, Sith Lord named Darth Squanto. And you think I'm joking, but I'm not. It's actually a Native American Sith Lord <laughs> named Darth Squanto. <laughs> I think it's best if we just go along with the plot and not ask many questions. So Darth Squanto shows off his powers by force choking and throwing Frank. So you know he means business and he won't be defeated by some measly house shark. He prepares to go into the house with all sorts of plastic weapons <laughs> as you do when you're, you know, a Sith Lord a Native American Sith Lord. Upon entering the house, he promptly gets eaten by the house shark. Like instantly, he just walks in and dies. So I guess Darth Squanto wasn't really cut out for the work. <laughs> F's in the sand for Darth Squanto. Everybody, since we're on the beach, you know, we're on the beach, there's, a, there's a water behind me. So the realtor's boss is all disgruntled. He's like, God damn it, Josh Squanta was supposed to do it. All right, I'll hire this new guy named Abraham. And he has an Abe Lincoln beard, so. It's a very realistic beard, by the way. The smell of freshly soiled pants tells me otherwise. Oh, and he has man boobs. I can't see the man boobs, but they keep talking about them. So he must have man boobs. Man boobs aren't muscles. And then he like humps the boss man. It's very odd. Cut out man boobs, the box. <laughs> Your pecs don't jiggle this much. I'm not sure what's happening, but please stop. So remember Zachary Taylor? Yeah, well, he shows up and he's very German. He's dressed very German and he's talking very German. He's just very German. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. He tells Frank the reason he's a house shark expert. It's because he likes sharks, but he doesn't like water. I love the sharks, but I'm afraid of the ocean. Yeah. Salt jaws, huh? Yeah. Huh? Land shark, house shark. Zachary looks into a window and he finds a shark tooth. And then remember the couple that got killed in the house? Yeah, well, the guy just like drops into the window out of nowhere and his finger is there too and it has the remains of his wife's butthole around his finger. He was killed while fingering his wife in the butt, you know, because that's what you do when you go to a house showing and the realtor leaves the house. You, you finger your wife's ass. What is happening? I don't know. 
very strange. Points for creativity, I guess. So Abraham meets up with Frank and Zachary, and he agrees to help them kill the house shark. So they board up the windows to keep the shark from getting out of the house. Because that was the issue, you know. The shark getting out of the house. That was... That was what they wanted to prevent. They even board up the doors so they can't go in the house. They want to keep the shark in there. So Frank's ex-wife shows up. Zachary calls her a stupid bitch. And Abraham calls her SpongeBob Ugly Face. When you're done kissing SpongeBob Ugly Face. <laughs> for pretty much no reason. They're just really mean. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> What are you doing? Every now and again throughout this movie, they put these like Instagram selfies up on screen. Like they just took a moment to take some selfies. Let's move. Some of them don't make a lot of sense for the moment, you know. It's just the house shark way. Very modern and very relatable. So after boarding up the entire house, they decide to take down the boards from the door and enter the house anyway because their plans just keep changing. Abe falls asleep, because that's what you'd do if there's a shark near you, he would fall asleep. And Zachary pulls out his ray gun. Oh, revive me, I have the ray gun. Which he calls the variable anomaly generator, or badge for short. <clears throat> yeah, it's basically just a toy gun with a CD on the barrel. The house shark ends up cornering all three gentlemen in a bathtub, and they all just sit there and squeal. <laughs> The squealing is so painful that it makes the house shark just leave them there. Guys, he's gone. I'm not sure if that's actually true. I just said that because the house shark decided to leave. Like it didn't attack them; it just kind of like left them there. So, so they need to think of a different plan. So their new plan is to get a female shark costume to trick the shark into, you know getting a little bit horny for this female shark. And then while it's distracted, that's when they can make their move. So they got just like a regular shark costume with a pink apron, you know, to signify that it's a woman. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Abraham tells these other two gentlemen of a time when he first encountered a house shark and it decapitated him. He bit off both my arms, my legs, my head. Your head? You might be wondering why he's still alive. Well, that's because they stitched him back together, you idiot. If you lose a body part, just put it back on and you're fixed. That's how bodies work. The house shark shows up again, but this time they're prepared. Frank is wearing the lady shark costume. He doesn't want to have sex with a shark, but they have no choice. Zachary says, just let him put the tip in. <laughs> I am not letting house shark have sex with me. I'll just let him put the tip in. So the house shark does what you think the house shark's gonna do and it pulls out a laser gun and it starts firing on them. Abraham shoots it with a crossbow bolt and it escapes into a cabinet that is far too small for it, but it just squishes itself in there. It turns out that Zachary was lying this entire time. He's not actually German and he's in love with the house shark. Aww. Oh, Mr. Taylor. You've got some explaining to do. The house shark was his friend named Woodrow. <laughs> Apparently he created the house shark by accident. It was like an experiment gone wrong, like every single other like evil superhero villain in history. Like an accident gone wrong. Oh, I have all these superpowers, except this time it's a shark that doesn't need water to survive. And it just kind of like, chills in people's homes. It can like change its size too, I'm guessing. They don't say that, but it must be able to. I mean, it can fit into a, a toilet drain and it's this big, so. So the three men sing a shanty. Look oh, like my hands, my gold is clean, so I'll sail afar. Because sharks, eh? That's why I'm wearing this sweet getup because Water, sharks, sailors, the sea. Hark the seagulls, maybe. The house shark shows up again and steals Zachary as its bride by sucking him down a sink drain. How can Zachary fit down a sink drain and survive? You might be asking. Don't ever doubt the house shark's powers, people. <coughs> in the next scene, Zachary is laying there covered in shark jizz. <laughs> He's very upset that his two friends abandoned him, so he promptly makes an Instagram post 
that he's gonna get revenge. He doesn't forget to make the Instagram face, you know, the the blue steel. And he needs the hashtags in there too, you know? House shark, revenge. You need that discoverability, people. So Frank and Abe are fighting the shark again. And then guess who shows up? The retail boss man. Yeah, he just kind of shows up because he really wants this house sold. And he's willing to do anything to get the house sold. Even throw himself into this shark's mouth with a grenade in hand. I'm going in. Ah! It's called self-sacrifice, everybody. And guess what? It does nothing. Like the grenade just doesn't do anything. The house shark is so powerful. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so the shark escapes again. Zachary wants his revenge. So he blows up the water heater and it fills the house with water in an instant like that. Boom, the house, it's filled with water now. It fills up to the ceiling with very convincing water. It's real, can't you tell? So Frank and Abraham are swimming around in the basement. They come across a skeleton, but not just any skeleton, a dollar store skeleton that you hang on the wall. You know, because it has a little, little string on its head. <laughs> and then they come across Zachary, who has been just swimming around down there waiting for them. And then an underwater battle ensues. They hold their breath for a strangely long period of time, but it doesn't matter. All that matters is revenge. Abraham takes a swig of some alcohol underneath the water. I'm not sure how you can do that, but <laughs> he does it. <laughs> so then the house shark shows up and Abe is desperately trying to hold it back. And then Frank drains all of the water somehow. Just don't ask any questions. He just drains the water and it instantly goes away. <laughs> so then they pretend to be everyday objects until the shark falls asleep. Will they finally kill the house shark? No. It waddles away. It escapes again. <laughs> they decide their only option is to train to kill it. So Abraham decides to become a praying mantis. He just starts like doing this a lot. And I guess that's his way of training to defeat the house shark. It doesn't do much because in the next scene, the house shark eats Abe. <laughs> Frank takes Zachary's weird syringe thing and injects it into the shark and nothing happens. So there's one thing left that they can do. Since Abe is an alcoholic, he has all this alcohol in his system, all Frank has to do is shoot the alcohol and it will explode. The combination of the alcohol and this injection will create a nuclear explosion. So he shoots Abe, who's in the mouth of the shark, and there's a huge explosion. And finally, they defeat the house shark. F's in the chat for Frank and Abe, everybody. Just kidding. They're alive. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah! Abe's ahead again. You know, just, just stitch him on to something. He'll be fine. Frank is completely fine too, so. That was the movie House Shark. So definitely not the best movie I've ever seen. <laughs> what the fuck was that? This movie did have some funny moments, but it was extremely bloated. Like it went on for way too long. I think the shark escaped like 50 times in this movie. Thank you so much NordVPN for sponsoring this video. And thank you guys for watching, mateys. Now dock us at this harbor. I'm done making this video. I hate sharks now. I'm never talking about sharks ever again. Just kidding. I have another video about sharks coming. <laughs> I'm going to be covering two more shark movies in the next video. I'm sorry. There's like a million shark movies to cover. And I had so many people asking me to cover all these different movies about sharks. So I figured I'm just gonna dedicate two videos to shark movies and that's it. And it was really hard to land on like specific shark movies, but I think I found some good ones. So stick around for the next video. Till we meet again around these waters, ye matey. Toodaloo. Uh -uh. Oh wait, that's a train. We're on a boat. Uh, oh yeah. Here's a, an oar. Bye-bye!